Okay, what I want to do in this video is take a little bit of time out, a little bit of stressing down, and um, have a sort of half serious, half not look at the climate scientist and compare the climate scientist to a real scientist. Now, this is our climate scientist, government climate scientist, of course, keeps the theory in his head. Immovable, blindfolded to any new data, hides his data so that no one can check it, keeps the faith, throws the records out, anything that's the wrong data, ignores new papers, keeps them out of the literature. And this is what happens when you ask one of these scientists for evidence. You're a delayer, you're a denier, you're an inactivist, you're a dinosaur, you're a dangerous child abuser, you're a climate coward. You do nothing, oil shill, getting money from, what's the latest favourite one? Cork Brothers, I think it is. And here, of course, is the type of science that such a scientist produces. The hockey stick, the famous hockey stick curve. Of course, there's two versions. There's the no Nobel Prize version, which is the blue one along the bottom. No Nobel Prize there. And then as the temperatures flying up from 1900 to 2000, going straight up like a rocket, leading to the probability of a Nobel Peace Prize of 100%. And of course, this is the corrected version by real scientists McIntyre and McKittrick. Then of course, there's the modelling, the climate modelling, that predicts a tripling of the effect of carbon dioxide on global temperatures because of the tripling positive feedback effect from water vapour, what else? And here's how they calculate it. Carbon knob is up 30%. I don't see how this can't be disastrous. Now I'll detail just a couple of the impacts on us ordinary people of climate change action. How about many Australian desalination plants built at a cost of billions of dollars that are now Totally useless and idle. Well, how about for the ordinary British person, tens of thousands of swimming pools built for the nice warm weather that was predicted that hasn't happened. Totally useless waste of money. Hang on, I can see something really good coming on the horizon. The petition project. 31,000 scientists disagree with the so-called consensus. At least 9,000 of them are PhDs. So we need to look into this a little bit more. How about looking at what is a scientist and what is a non-scientist, that is, most of the climate scientists. Scientist holds observations above opinions, doesn't break rules of logic and reason, answers questions, gives out all their data, all their methods, everything other people need to repeat their experiment, is helpful, polite, can explain what would falsify their theory. Just their theory to fit the facts. Instead, we've seen, really, what is a non-scientist? People using circular reasoning, using argument from authority, i.e. the consensus. Use the argument from ignorance. Use ad hominem attacks. Boy, that's a common one, isn't it? Hides or loses their data. <laughs> Have a look at the climate gate emails for that one. Just the data to fit the theory. <laughs> look at my last video for that one. One debate or answer questions. That's very common too. Bullies, threatens, name calls. More common than ever. Idolizes human institutions. Hail the IPCC. Has faith in systems, committees or authorities. Such as the UN, the IPCC and so on. UNFCCC. There's hundreds of others. Okay, let's see what a real scientist does. That's a change, isn't it? He keeps the data. So the people can check what is done. Shares his records without any fuss. Without having to FOI everything for years. He throws out theories that have been shown to be wrong. That have been invalidated. Wrong theory bin. Instead of wrong data bin. There's a big difference, isn't there? Let's take one example. This is Henrik Svensmark's work. Showing the relationship between cosmic rays and temperatures. Strong correlation there. Same thing, strong correlation in the data. Carbon-14 versus oxygen-18. 
So a solar activity proxy versus a temperature proxy. Look at the correlation, which leads us to Sven's Max Cosmoclimatology hypothesis. And then we can turn to cyclic theory. There's a lot of cyclic theorists out there. 60-year AMO index perfectly correlated with the Yoshimura. Peak in 1880, peak in 1940, peak in 2002. This is what we call real science. Real science that should have been used all the time. We shouldn't have to point this out. Needless to say, many of the guys who are self-styled climate scientists who work in climate science have got no qualifications in any science. I know it sounds ridiculous, but quite a lot of them haven't. All they are is either climate modelers or mathematicians, so they're experts in anything but climate. Of course, you get arguments online about was it warmer in the medieval warm period than now or not? A lot of the alarmists claim it was cooler and it was hotter now. That's not true. The data doesn't say that. There's hundreds of papers on the medieval warming period showing it was global and warmer than it is today. How much warmer? Here in red you can see in centigrade how much it is warmer. Warmer everywhere except in two places where it was slightly cooler. And here's why. This is the solar activity, carbon-14 proxy for solar activity, concentration in the atmosphere, change in carbon-14 on the left, and we've got temperatures from 1000 AD to 2000 AD on the bottom. You can clearly see the very high solar activity during the medieval warm period, which lasted until about 1250, 1280. Then it got a lot cooler towards the Spora minimum, then the Maunder minimum, and uh, the Dalton minimum in the uh, early 1800s. And now we've got a massive rise in solar activity to the, to the present modern maximum. The last half of the 20th century was the highest solar activity for at least 8,000 years. That's in the literature. And that leads us directly to the dead hockey stick and the son of the hockey stick that was born later on. And I say, long live science. Real science that uses the scientific method. And failure to Soros and all his funded propaganda think tanks such as Group Think Progress, Open Societies, etc, etc, etc. Thanks.